You can assign existing data objects to the context on the signature tab with the button Add Existing Data Objects. The button Add New Data Object offers two options to create and assign new data objects to the context. There is the classical way of creating a single new data object, and we have a multiple objects creation option. I prefer the classical option. You may reuse the standard data object. We have defined two incoming parameters to the function. One is boolean and the other is a number. What about the result? The result data object will basically contain the rule evaluation result. Using a structure or table type data object allows you to pass back multiple values at one go. When the function is set to event mode, the standard data object actions is set by default. This is a table that will collect the IDs of all action objects that are actually processed during the rule execution. You may, however, replace the action's data object. A data object must be used only one time in the signature of the function. For example, it is not possible to use the same data object in the context and also as the result data object. When using structures and tables, you must also take care that the data objects they reference as components are only used once. In general, it is recommended that different structures and tables should not share the same data objects. The usage of a table in the function signature will implicitly also make the table's structure and its elements accessible within the connected rule definitions. In other words, those elements become variables in the context in their own right. Let's assume we want this function to return a number. We can choose this type from the default type list. Now, let's try and click the check button to evaluate our progress so far. Oh no, I got an error! This error message tells us that we placed two data elements in the context with the same name. This is forbidden. To overcome this problem, you have to use a data element with different name. You can use an existing one or create one. I will choose to create a new data object with a different name but of the type number. Let's call it result number. Here I can choose from the default type list. Now let us check the function one more time. Notice there is still a message here. This message is an information message. Information messages are intended to give us some useful information and they are not to be considered as an indication of a problem. In this case, BRF tells us that we haven't yet assigned any rule set to this function. Notice also that this message is only relevant in event mode. In such a case, 
where there are no rule sets in an event mode function, the function simply does nothing. However, we can still activate it and run it. Let's try it. This pop-up window informs us that there are several inactive related objects. If we want to activate a function, we must also activate all of its related objects. We can accomplish this in one click through this pop-up window. The function is now active. It means we can test it. You can test any function by clicking the simulation button. For now, I will ignore all those lovely options and move on to the actual simulation screen. You can enter values to the input elements, but you probably already know that the function won't do a thing, no matter what input it gets. Remember why? Because we haven't assigned any rule set yet. I will insert some values anyway, just to make a point. Now I will execute the function. The result is zero, because the result object of this function is of type number, and zero is the initial value of any data element of this type. Let's return to the workbench. Nice work! You now have a fully activated function, with input elements and an output element. Don't bother yourself that it does nothing. In the next lecture, I will talk about expressions, the logic carriers for the business rules. I will start from the more basic ones, like constant expressions, and show you how to combine them with the function object to create a fully functional business rule.